Hey there, I am Nev, I'm a dev, and today I'm going to talk about Svelgate versus Astro because I just quickly, or not quickly, but I just recently ported my website from Svelgate to Astro, and today I want to talk about it, uh, what I think is better, and what I prefer to use, what I use when, and of course I'm also going to talk about the features that they have specifically. So yeah, um... So yeah, if we go to our uh, portfolio, to our new personal website, which is uh, still the same domain, nevillebrand.com, we again, of course, can see we have super fast loading times. This not only applies to here because I have this page already cached, but also if I go here and put nevillebrand.com in here, it loads pretty much fast. And also if I go ahead and do nevillebrand.com here, just super fast. Why? Because this is just a static HTML. We can even look at the sources and the network tab. And if we refresh, we see that we have a script, but I think this is probably something different, right? This is a uh, thing for something like uh, analytics. This is definitely analytics. This is like this inject thing for Vercel. Um, yeah, but I think this is like, it doesn't matter for me how much JavaScript it chips. It should just be fast and it is fast, like, right? We have all these cool effects and stuff. So um, yeah, pretty much like this. Um, yeah, shipped super fast. And yeah, today I want to go uh, over like what are the features of Svalkin and Astro. And let's begin with that. So if you go to the website um, of Astro, which is astro.build, they say that they are the web framework for content-driven websites. And Astro powers the world fastest marketing sites, blogs, e-commerce, and more. It is actually crazy that Google, Microsoft, The Guardian, and NordVPN all use this. Sounds pretty crazy to me. So they are very content-driven. They are server-first, so Astro improves website performance by rendering components on the server and then sending lightweight HTML to the browser. And then JavaScript basically comes into its part and hydrates the uh, DOM. Not always, not if we are just using no JavaScript like on this website. But yeah, sometimes they do that. It is performant anyways, right? Um, yeah, so let's go into Svelte, uh, or especially Svelkit, which is web development streamlined. They are fast, fun, and flexible. It is, of course, powered by Svelte and Wheat. You can do many modes, single page application, multi-page application, server-side rendering like Astro, and static site generation like Astro. So uh, maybe important to mention is that Svelkit is a full stack framework and Astro is kind of a full stack framework. Not really. You can do many backend stuff in Astro, um, but I wouldn't really consider um, Astro like a really full stack framework. And Svelkit is, of course, uh, built on these funny web principles like the HTTP request protocol, um, it does not try to abstract like forms and stuff because in React forms is kind of a pain. I know there are some uh, libraries which abstract this um, away from you, but in my opinion, forms in React are just a pain to work with. And Svelkit, especially with super forms, uh, which I did already a video about, just works super well. So they don't try to abstract things too much. But I must say, you can't really compare them, right? Because they both have kind of their own use cases, and I think they're both great. So this makes us, makes it, especially for me, very hard to compare. And also, if you go into our homepage, I actually say that Svelkit and Astro are both in my stack, um, which at first probably makes not so much sense, but I just like to use both, right? Yeah, so... They have, as I said, they're both great because um, they're new. They're pretty much bleeding edge, I would say. Okay, not bleeding edge. Svelte so has established itself a bit for quite a while now. But I think they're both pretty new, right? They are in constant improvement, which is good because uh, if something is new, you kind of need to improve it. And Astro, I think they like release two times a month or something like that. They release something new, which is crazy. And Svelte is, of course, also an active development. I don't really know about Svelkit itself, but at least Svelte, they are in constant development. They both have a great community and a growing ecosystem, which is super nice to have because, like, if you have a community, this pretty much saves your technology because, like, you can chat with other people, you can show your work, you can share your work and stuff. So... This is pretty much this, and they are 
both like cutting edge modern principles so um pretty new to explore if you're curious just check them out i would say if, if you're coming from a react um kind of world where i came from i would go ahead and check these out especially astro i think astro clicks a bit more if you're react brained let's actually now talk about the things they have in common so you can of course um, make that both output static html so in astro it's just default but if you want to see you can actually go ahead into your astro.config.mgs specify this as static of course if you're using the vercel adapter import the vercel adapter from slash static so right here and not from i think the other is serverless right not from serverless um yeah just do that and you're pretty much good to go um and in svelkit you can i think you can go ahead and say pre-render is true or something like that let's go ahead and look at ssg um yeah you can pre-render the page um, so it's likely that at least some routes of your app can be represented as a single, as a simple HTML file generated at build time. These routes can be pre-rendered. So for example, if we go to Zenith, uh, productivity, that app, which is the app I'm building currently, um, I could statically generate this, this, but probably not this, maybe, I'm not sure, but at least these two pages I could pre-render pretty easily, right? Um, because they are just content pages, right? I could also do them in Astro, of course, but this would be like extra work, um, extra unnecessary work, right? Um, so yeah, they have SSR. So Svelkit, of course, has SSR by default, um, but you can disable this in your layout.ts or layout.server.ts with like export const ssr equals false um and they have both like these deployment adapters for Vercel, netlify aws cloudfire workers and so on um so this is basically almost like the same you know they are both um acknowledged and optimized with Vercel and netlify um i think uh astro is now uh, the official deployment partner with netlify which makes it a bit interesting because I'm now considering um, to c go back to Netlify, which sounds actually a bit crazy. Um, because Svelkit is also not like the one uh, priority of Vercel, um, but Next.js. Um, but I think Vercel has like this kind of philosophy that they are like, okay, we support the web and we want to push the web forward. So Svelkit and Astro, we're also going to support... Um, so yeah, other thing they have in common is they um, both focus on performance. So the fast page loads, page renders, etc. So they are both like heavily focused on performance or not heavily focused, but like they're focused on performance, at least I would say like, um, and they have a similar router. So I can actually showcase this to you. Um, so here we have our Neville Brem Astro. Um, and we should have our portfolio Svelte kit right here. And actually, let's put them side by side. Um, collapse all folders. Um, looks pretty similar, right? We even have this like generated uh, Svelte kit and Astro folder. We have static and public where we put our static files. It's just naming convention, I guess. And in here, in our SRC folder, we really have everything going on. Svelkit makes this maybe a bit more simple, I guess. Um, not too sure, though. Um, in our routes, we have page and layout. Um, this is not a routing tutorial. Um, and in here, we have a page, pages uh, directory where we just put everything in here. Index, everything called index will be just a root, um, like route. And work and contact will be slash work slash contact. And in blog, we can also define an index. And then in blog, we can define this one, which will actually take the blog slash post slash is slog and then parse this slog. So this is that. But again, this is not a, a writing tutorial for Astro and Svelte neither. So 
just a little comparison for that. They also have very similar syntax. So if we go ahead and actually um, look at a file in here, we have kind of this thing right here where we can write our JavaScript. It's top level await. So we don't need to like wrap this in an async function, which differentiates it a bit because in Svelte, we just have our script tag, our normal markdown uh, markup language and in our script tag, this is not like top level await. We would need to write an async function in here and we need to write all our logic, of course, in R plus page dot server, which we don't have anymore since I removed the contact form because I got just spam emails all the time. The syntax is pretty similar. Uh, like I said, we could also define the style in here. Now you can actually write these um, Svelte components inside Astro. So this makes it like pretty useful for some kind of landing page or something like that, where you want to showcase your event uh, or like your component, which you have in your Svelte app um, directly in your landing page, like that it's interactive and so um, pretty amazing in your components or like basically any directory because you can name these directories how you want. Um, we have this component that's Svelte and we can even use props right here. So expert let btn text is string and then use this and we and if we go ahead and do bond dev and go ahead and open this page up um i think i put it in the blog you can see that it's actually here so this is pretty amazing right we have our little uh svelte component inside of um inside of an astro file right this is this is pretty cool. Like you can also do this with react, um, but I'm not going to showcase this today. They both have bright futures, I think, because Svelte introduced runes uh, with Svelte 5, which is an active development. Um, like it is even in speculation that we are getting native support for WebSockets. Um, even to know what a WebSocket is, it's kind of like this real time thing where you can hook in you with your app and then you could do like a collaboration st uh, thing or something like that like if you're using google docs in collaboration with something with someone different then you are in a websocket with this other person and then you get like real-time updates and so on so yeah and probably also some internationalization but i think i am not so sure what is actually planned on svelkedra's roadmap um if I find something more, I will link that down in the description. Um, for Astro, uh, we get some more concrete stuff. We have Astro ENV, uh, which is a module for environment variables, which makes it super easy to define your environment variables. And Astro Actions. Um, these are these two are very cool because um, till now you had to do very complex shenanigans to achieve something like a ask, uh, like an action like a form action, but now you can just um, have a folder called actions and put all your actions in there, which is pretty nice, right? And also server islands. So uh, if we go ahead and look that up, actually, uh, because I can't really explain that, um, I need to show it to you. So we have this little blog post about server islands. Um, in 2021, Astro pioneered a new front-end architecture called Islands. So Islands, they are, we have basically, this is our page and we have static HTML here, static HTML here, and static HTML here, which are all components or just like a root file. But we have a header and the image carousel, which are interactive, which means they are a React component or a Svelte or a Vue component or a quick, I don't know. Um, does not really matter. The thing is just that they are interactive and they are not static. And so yeah, this is um, an island and they want to push that further with server-side rendering islands. So as you can see here, probably um, the user button just gets like server-side rendered and this is just very nice, right? You can basically have server-side render components in your Astro and still have very fast load times. So this is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, this is about like the futures. And now let's actually talk about the different use cases where I would use Astro, where I would use Svelkit and Astro I would use for landing pages, which is pretty straightforward. Like nevillebrand.com is a landing page, right? Um, we also have barmates.ch, which is the landing page I built with Svelkit. Um, we also have, if we go to our, uh, projects right here, uh, work, 
we have this one, this Lapland course event page. Um, if we go to that, this is also built with Astro, a little uh, landing page. Yeah, really like that. Need to update some things and this is like not the official thing. This is just like a template, some kind of, you know, this is a landing page. And I would also use this for e-commerce. Uh, of course, I have my Wolf Bricks, um, which is an e-commerce store, but I used a Svelte kit for Wolf Bricks because first of all, I didn't use Astro at this time. And second of all, it depends on the size of the of the e-commerce store where I actually would use Astro over Svelkit. So it doesn't really make sense, right? For me, at least. And I would use it, of course, to build my dogs if I would have ever to build a dog but I don't have plans for building docs, so this is why I won't do it in the near future. And of course, blogs or other content-driven websites, for that they work pretty well. I actually also have a demo for that. If we go to my screen and to my work page, yeah, it's down here, photography. This is built with Astro. Yeah, and I also built a little blog with that. So uh, yeah, just a little photography page about myself and yeah, really like this. And Svelkit, of course, I would use for big apps like I'm building right now, I'm building uh, Zenith. I also built a kind of social media app um, just for like the portfolio called Codoodle, which I also, um, is kind of complex, not too complex, but like it needs a kit. I can build it with Astro, maybe, but probably not. And of course, for interactive apps, for software as a service, or SaaS for short, and for like big admin dashboards and yeah, general like performant apps where they also scale with my performance so um yeah and also of course back-end heavy apps uh, which also need a interface um but i haven't really wrote any back-end stuff or fully like mono back-end things um like you can write back-end code in svelkit but like the only real back-end thing i've written yet was express like a little javascript express server um, but I haven't like touched Go or Rust or something like that. I uh, really need to do that in the near future though. So yeah, I got plenty of things to do. And this pretty much sums it up. Um, I really much like the vibe of Svelte. Um, it sounds a bit weird, but it's actually true. I think I hear that from many developers. Svelte just clicks kind of. Um, so I'm going to keep using it. And of course, Astro for like the little projects. There was also a little school project where I used Astro, which came in pretty handy. And yeah, so this pretty much sums it up. I was gone for quite a while, for like three weeks or so, because I was on vacation. But now I'm back and I'm motivated to create more content for you guys. And yeah, we will see us probably in a next Sunday or something like that. Thanks to the huge support this channel has been getting. We're now over 500 subscribers, which I would have never thought was possible like in a half a year. But yeah, thanks a lot. I think the algorithm is at the moment a bit pissed at me because I'm uploading so inconsistently, but um, I of course plan to change that, like I said. And yeah, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss out any further videos and we will see us in the next one. Bye.